Blog Talk Radio. Hola, como estas? Mi amo Beastmaster. This is Carnival Spirits. We are ninjas in action. Who's on the line? Static. What up, dude? How you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. It's a cold and cloudy day outside. So. This podcast today, talking about kick and kicking, I originally wanted to reflect on all the other uh, mentionings and instances of, of the of the word ninja in all of ICP's music. But come on, man. Honestly, we would need more than one podcast to do that. ICP's music oh, is yeah. so rich with ninja innuendos that I don't even think we could do this in one podcast. I didn't even prepare, so it's not like I have a list in front of me. I thought maybe we change the direction of the focus of this podcast and talk about songs that are similar to Kicking Kicking, but not because of the subject matter, more uh, songs that are that slow pace that ICP likes to do every once in a while. It's not what they're most famous for, but it's something that they've been doing for a long time, you know, giving us those slow jams. Yeah. No, I went back and I listened to all three songs, you know, Super Ninja, Ninja, and Drunken Ninja Master. And between them three... I think I like Ninja the best because it talks about how he wishes he was a ninja, you know, to, to save his mom because his dad's being his mom and he wants to whip his ass and shit. And then he's talking, I, yeah. I, I can't remember exactly. I think there's a part where he's talking about whipping some kid's ass in school and now all the kids are swinging from his nuts. All the poor kids swing from his nuts. It's like being a, a working class hero, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. he's like his, his boss is a prick who just makes a little bit more than he does, but he's acting like he's the boss. It reminds me of uh, the homies video where a homeboy is making his broom float and then his boss, like, yells at him and he, like, yeah. clicks and walks out the door. <laughs> it's funny because back in the day, whenever I very first started listening to ICP, you know, I was, like, 14, 15 or whatever, and you'd laugh, you know, ha-ha, <laughs> poor kid swinging from his nuts. But now being older, I realize what the fuck they meant. You know, they are like, almost worshipping him because what he was doing, you know. They weren't actually, you know, they weren't just saying, oh, they're actually swinging from a nutsack. There was a deeper meaning to that. It's a play on words, meaning that you are, like, you hear all the kids cheering, yay, so yeah. that, that you're on their jock, you know. It's a, it's an expression. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really cool. That, that song means a lot to a lot of people. It really hits home for people who come from broken homes, people who deal with alcoholism in their families and shit like that. You know, we can talk about the dark carnival till the cows come home, but the bottom line is that ICP really plucks those heartstrings when it comes to the everyday problems of scrubs out there dealing with, with these family situations, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, like, yeah. Super Ninja is just a funny shit. Not a bird or a plane, but a, a flying fat guy. A hole where the nuts <laughs> flap out, you know? I mean, come on, dude, that's fucking dope. Kind of like the part where you're like, dick for dinner! Yeah. <laughs> And I also like the part in that song where he has, I don't know what effect they use, but he's talking about a slice across the neck many inches, and it sounds like yeah. um, it sounds like he's got, like, uh, munchkins, you know, doing backup vocals for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not munchkins, but some sort of demonic fucking voices. Um, before I let the next caller on, I'm going to uh, just address real quick the fact that the production on this song in particular, is, the beat that Mikey e. Clark made for this song is so rich with sound effects. And what I mean is, is that Shaggy Too Dope has laced this song, and Mikey e. Clark has obviously peppered this song with, with all these signature sound effects, but it's like, ki and these sweeps, and, and, you know, the blade yeah. being drawn, and these drum rolls, and this is what I love about the song, where, um, and of course, you know, out of all the people that have reviewed this album, the only person I've ever heard knocking this song is Test Dummy 22, saying that it doesn't belong on a Joker's card because it's a slow song, and, it, and those type of songs don't belong on Joker's cards. I, I will agree with him that these type of songs do not primarily appear on Joker's cards, but I'm going to disagree that it makes it a bad song and that it makes it a bad move to put it on the album, because I think that this is actually a very lyrically impressive song, especially for Shaggy Two Dope when he comes in on his uh, on his last verse where he flips it up real fast, you know, kicks your dick in. That shit's awesome. Uh, that's just my opinion. Sorry, All right, who else have we got on the line? Sad Juggalo 82, homies. Oh, shit. What's going on? Great. Uh, what's, what's going on, guys? 
do you have any input on this uh, subject of the song or? Well, I mean, I remember when I was younger, Jay always talking about like the movie Ninjas in Action and shit like mm-hmm. that. And I mean, <clears throat> how can you say that it's not like a true juggle song because they've always talked about ninjas and we call each other ninjas and shit like that. We were talking about and that earlier, how ICP actually calls everybody ninjas as if it was a term of endearment. Like, hey, buddy, hey, man, or hey, look at that chick over there, or look at that ninja. It's A ninja isn't the equivalent of a juggalo. A ninja is just a fucking person. And and that, that lingo that we've all embraced is probably one of my favorite things about the juggalo subculture is that we all address yeah. each other like ninjas, as if we're fucking knights in shining armor, addressing everybody as sirs or something. <laughs> well, if you really look at it, I don't know about you guys, but I know when I was four or five years old, I wanted to be a ninja. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that was like the coolest thing in the world. And I mean, that song, just hearing that song just out of nowhere, it kind of makes you think back of when you was a little kid like all the gangster-ass ninja movies, we grew up watching that. Uh-huh. I mean, mm-hmm. for real, like, oh, as an American ninja, that was, like, the greatest ninja movie of all time back in the day. It may not qualify, but you guys remember The Last Dragon? Yes, I actually own that movie. Uh, I'm sure it does qualify. All right, we are, we, are not, we are no longer the Three Stooges. Who else is on the line? S to B. Oh, oh, shit, Scotty, two balls. What's up, motherfuckers? What's up, Scotty? What's going on, homies? Damn, I wish I could be a Shogun Samurai. <laughs> Do you feel that kicking, kicking? Is, is the song qualifies for the Joker's card? Well, certainly. Certainly a fit right in there with the whole ninja shit. Is the song too slow for a Joker's card? Is it inter- Should that have been saved for the sideshow? Because it's no. a slow song? No? No. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, what they want to put on there, and what they should be on there, and what shouldn't be. You know, you know what I'm think, saying? Um, from Bang Pow Boom, they put a slow song on that album called I Found a Body, which is one of my favorite songs on that album. Yep. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. Kicking, kicking, too slow. I think it, if it was fast, I don't, I don't think uh, it would kind of sound weird. You know what I'm saying? Because it kind of sounds like he's, like, creeping up on my ninja, you know? When, when you watch a fight scene, a fighter is usually methodically taking out uh, his opponents one at a time, and it's almost like if you're, like, in uh, The Matrix Part 2, when he's just surrounded by all the agents, and, and he's just fucking going through them one by one. That's what I imagine when I hear kicking, kicking. It's just like Shaggy Judo popping off the walls and doing all those things that lyrically they're describing, you know? Right. I love his reference to uh, Mr. Crab's feet. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Dave. Crazy as fuck. Like Mr. Crab's feet. <laughs> it's fucking funny. Didn't they already make a, a crab walking reference in Zombie Slide? <laughs> yep. Yep. But you're saying how, like, some people are saying that it's a slow song and it shouldn't be on there. Well, what about A Hater to Death? That's even slower than Kicking, Kicking. Uh, yeah, well, we're not there yet. We'll we'll do a whole episode on Hater to Death. That's a good point. I think Hater to Death has a little bit more of a guitar-driven vibe to it. Um, ICP and guitar-driven beats. Bono J loves to sing. We all know this. Mm-hmm. That kind of makes me think of some of the bizarre songs from, like, Bizarre Bizarre and shit. Because that's uh-huh. when they oh, really, yeah. like, expanded with the guitar riffs and the actual drums. I mean, I remember going to the concert for Bizarre Bizarre, and they had Zug Island up there, but they were painted up and shit. It was just their homies. You know, the music in the Bizarre Bizarre era, which is, like, fucking a decade ago, mm-hmm. it really kind of marks the time period where the old school and the new school can't meet because everything after that point, it's either an issue of the quality changed or the subject matter, What you know, they, they're not trying as hard or it's not as magical. Whatever the complaint is, these new Joker's cards are like a rejuvenation of ICP's entire career. And to make a song that's just dedicated to ninja kicking just seems like, you know, if Violent J is sitting there trying to rack his brain, what, what else can we possibly rap about, you know? They just made a really 
timeless classic, in my opinion. This song, you listen to it, it encapsulates juggaloism and ICP, like, from day one, in my opinion. The only thing you could possibly rag on the song for is because it's a little bit slower, and most of the slow songs that ICP has put out have appeared on sideshows, like Truth Dare, The Perfect Night, Crop Circles, even songs like, you know, Wicked Wild, the slower beats, you know what I mean, with uh, Isham and Fresh Kid Ice and Fish and Grits. Um, mm-hmm. Just like slower songs from Bizarre Bizarre, like Radio Stars, when ICP is actually clowning on the mainstream music while they're dropping their own original flavor. So the actual song, Radio Stars, is a slow song, you know, mocking some other genre, but when they're not mocking another <laughs> genre and they're like, oh, shit, I told you I don't know how to sing or play guitar, they're rapping over yeah. that slow, funky beat that Mikey Clark laid down. And that's what I hear kicking, kicking is. It's that slow, funky beat, and they just kind of flow over it. Oh, yeah. Those bizarre CDs, man. Those fucking, those are bad as fuck. When you go back and listen to them, when you haven't listened to them like a year or two, it's like they're fucking amazing. It's like listening to the uh for the first time all over again. Yeah, the first time I listened to uh, <clears throat> Fearless, I was crying there because I was laughing my ass off so hard for all the stupid shit that they were saying in that song. <laughs> right? Like Shag- <laughs> like Shaggy, I'll punch a gorilla in the face and try to run away with a banana hanging out my ass. <laughs> yeah. Like- <laughs> you know, when I went to an in-store in 99 for the Asylum in-store, Jekyll Brothers era, ICP and Shaggy were signing comic books and posters and CDs, and they kept writing little phrases. Violent J would write, like, you know, don't stick your tongue in a light socket, and Shaggy Two Dope would be like, you know, don't uh, put a banana up your ass. And they were writing things that were going to be on those Bizarre Bizarre songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else we got here? That's crazy, man. The original Ninja song, obviously it's a classic. You know, it's got the flutes in there. Other other older songs from that era, My Kind of Bitch, uh, I Stuck Her With My Wing. The even older ones like the Dead One love song, Guts in the Ceiling. You know, those slow songs, it, it, it gives you something different. Something else besides the hardcore shit. In my opinion, back in the day, like, some of them slower songs, like Amy's in the Attic, is more of a darker thing than everything else. They're, they're not, like, joking around as much with a lot of the slower songs back in the day. No, but I think that's probably another reason why this isn't, you know, a unanimous favorite, is because it's not a wicked song. And, you know, other slow songs from psychopathic artists that aren't wicked, like... Uh, Blaze It at Home and Cottonmouth Kings. Right in the whip. That song is very slow and probably most resembles kicking, kicking. You know, like Tokyo Spa. Crystal Ball comes to mind from Bizarre Bizarre 2. You know, Mikey Clark's got that yeah. ability to, to turn some sort of oriental influenced wind chime, high pitched ringing noises. He just knows how to turn that shit into fucking beautiful harmony. Okay, I do. Got amazing ability. ICP's music is so fucking timeless. People can't even tell what time period it's from. You know what I'm saying? You can put something on. They'll say, well, "When did this come out?" You know, right. you can't place what year it's from. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe early, early like Carnival of Carnage. You can kind of tell it's from early '90s. Who else has joined us on the podcast? We have two new uh, ninjas online. Don Chaos. Oh, what's so, up, Don Chaos? Nothing much. <laughs> oh, Carl. Uh, what's up? What up, man? What do you got for us on the Ninja Tip? Well, for one, Kickin' Kickin' is a really good banging song. Like, if you have good bass in your car, it sounds really good in the car, and it just has an old-school hip-hop type beat to it. It's a really good song. And with the My Death Pop, you can tell they stepped up their rapping, like, perfected it, especially on that song. I don't think it's as easy as people think it is to write a like, song that is that chock full of significant rhyming <laughs> words that all fit within that one concept of, you know, kicking the shit out of somebody with them kung fu tactics. <laughs> when you know there's a Slick Rick reference in there, and anyone who's an old school hip-hop head knows who Slick, Slick Rick is. 
That's right. That's the first time they poked fun at him. That's cool, though. He was in Fearless also. <laughs> in the song Fearless. <laughs> la da da I just need up the slick yeah, creature snatch off his eye patch. La da da da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, I just saw Slick Rick's like first album at Best Buy. I was like, wow, this album came out in the eighties and they're still selling it sweet. Nope. All that means is that it hasn't sold yet. It's been fucking two decades and that shit's still on the shelf. Pretty much. <laughs> well, that's like what the... I agree with too. That Shaggy actually stood out on this song. Yeah, I agree. I, I really think Shaggy for his style of rapping, which is like broken English, everything mispronunciated and expressions butchered, like every time Shaggy raps, it's like ungrammatical and he makes it work. They built a career out of just like, I'm going to do this whether you like it or not. And they just happen to be getting better and better at it. But, you know, everyone has their off song for the off album. I just don't think this is one of them. Shoot, guys, I guess so, uh, better be heading out of here, man. Get back to work. All right, man. Thanks for calling in, Panic. We will talk to yep, you later. Thank you for having me. Later, man. Right. We'll see y'all later. All right, who else is still here? I am. I'm here. All right. I was going to text you. Guess what I just saw at Best Buy for only $9? Um, Eshawn's supposed last album. Venus Flytrap? Yeah, his Venus Flytrap album. It's only at Best Buy for $9. Well, that's a steal. I mean, right. it's a little more expensive than stealing it, but... Right. Um, Chaos, I don't know if you've been on the Internet this past week or so. Nope, because my Internet's been off. That's why I was going to text you and go, is there anything going on online that I should know about and stuff before I get my Internet turned back on? Yeah, man. Uh, we had a shout-out contest earlier. Uh, where nice. We, shouted out the, we had a top 17 ninjas that you should be subscribed to. Uh, shout out video, and you were you were shouted out in that video. So if you got any new subscribers, it's because uh, we gave you a big fat shout out, and then we did it again and shout out 17 more ninjas, and then we turned it into a contest. Three ninjas, who would get the most votes to be the last person to get a shout out between uh, Test Dummy, Boy Blue, and CPN, and right. So that just ended, and everybody got their shout outs and. The world is back to normal, and that's about all you missed. And pretty much I was also going to text you going, is there anything new on the whole Twisted situation that I should be aware of? Well, Twisted's YouTube channel, they just released four or five videos of uh, different uh, songs from New Year's Evil. Well, I'll have to see once I get my internet turned back on. Oh, besides that, I went and saw The Hobbit the other week, the, the other was day. Was it good? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I've been wanting to see it, and so did my girlfriend. They did a good job of tying it together with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and the 3D is just, it's just amazing. I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. Well, me and my girlfriend on this past Monday, we went to see Parental Guidance. That movie is so funny. Oh, my God. I've never laughed so hard seeing a movie that funny in a long time. Who stars in that? Um, Chris, oh, him, I can't remember. And then there's the one lady that played the redhead witch in Hocus Pocus. She's in that movie. Bette Midler? Oh, is it Albert Brooks? Is he the guy? Oh, it's Chris something. I know that. My mom knows his okay. name because my mom used to watch a lot of his old movies and stuff that he used oh, to be I in. I figured it out. I figured it out. It's Billy Crystal. I knew it. I just yeah, I couldn't put my there. finger on it. It was it's Billy Crystal and Bette Midler. Yeah, I saw a trailer for that. Oh, it's really funny. Oh, my God. Very cool. If you know anyone that's trying to make it in the music business, just tell them to send me some stuff in the mail. Did you ever see those phone numbers that you can use, and you call it, and it's like a pre-recorded message that yeah, says something like, like, the person that you are trying to call either doesn't like you or blah, 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 and therefore has given you this fake number so you can go fuck off. I think you had a great day. <laughs> yeah, that like used that. to be one of my friends' <laughs> voicemail. It was funny. Oh, yeah. It's almost as good as uh, when you make a voicemail message that's, that goes like this. Yeah, what's up? And when you try to talk, it's like, 
leave a message. <laughs> it tricks you into thinking that it's actually someone answering the phone. <laughs> yeah, I did that to one of my friends one time. That was funny. Uh, one time we were picking on our friend Glenn, like right after high school, and we took a Heineken bottle and dumped half of it out and pissed in the rest and put it in the freezer and, you know, we made him take a swig, laughed our asses <laughs> off because he was drinking piss. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good times, good times. Oh, man, this is a never-ending podcast, Joe. And it's just you and me left. Everybody else ducked out on us. It's just going on and on and on. <laughs> so do you have anything else you want to plug for the YouTube video? Uh, well, just be expecting me to hopefully return and, get, and hope that my Internet gets turned back on soon because I'm at the park just walking around. <laughs> nice. Well... Thanks for calling in, dude. I don't know what the next song is. I'm at. The next song is Bazooka Joey. Haha, <laughs> sweet. That's going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah. This is Don Chaos signing out, everyone. See ya. Peace. <laughs>